How's my family this morning? Did we have a good week? Are we ready for Labor Day tomorrow? Do you all have your tickets for the picnic? I'm going to burn hot dogs for you. Oh. Revelation 4.11 says, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your hand they were created and have their being. Isn't that fantastic? Prayer Circle is every Thursday morning at 10 a.m. We would love to have you there. It's a, it's a good time in the Lord. We review uh, those people on our lists and bring to mind those people so that we can remember them in prayer. Uh, we add to it. We're glad to add to it. Anybody. Uh, grief Share is starting on Wednesday, September 14th, we hope, out at uh, La Casa, right? It'll still be over at 137 to start? Yep. For another okay. few weeks. 3 p.m., the 14th, Wednesday. Be there, be square. The movie, uh, not this Sunday, but next Sunday, is Amazing Love, the story of Hosea. Who knows who Hosea is? Mm. Old Testament. There we go. Good. 2 p.m., come. There'll be popcorn, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You had to think about it, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> they do a great job. It's a wonderful piece of... Popcorn, it tastes good, yes. fills the belly. Don't forget the offering basket right over here. Please be generous with the gifts that God has given you. Amen? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Amen. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Amen? Amen. 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 Rise up, O oh people. Let us sing. The heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the people of God live in His praise all over the land. Everyone in the valley, come and lift your voice. All those on the mountain top be glad. Shout for joy.
There's a remote on the side of the gray box. <laughs> Come let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God our Maker. Come let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God our Maker. For He is our God. And we
worthy of all our praise is He. Amen. 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 Sing with me. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh,
Thank you, Ed. Did you enjoy the last couple of weeks with uh, Ed giving the message? I know one of them was on obedience. Did you enjoy the obedience? And then the uh, 12 men, 12 ordinary men. I, unfortunately, I wasn't able to watch it, but uh, I appreciate Ed stepping in and doing that. Say why? Because... Some dummy forgot to turn on this microphone. Oh. I thought because I was going on vacation. That's why he, he, uh, that's why he uh, stepped in and uh, filled in for me while I was gone. Well, this weekend is Labor Day weekend. Tomorrow is Labor Day. Oh, aren't you glad that uh, we only labor for one day, one day a year? No, it's not for that. Labor Day it pays tribute to the to the contributions and achievements of American workers and is traditionally observed on the first Monday of September. <clears throat> it was created by the labor movement of the 19th century. I don't know if you knew that. And become a, became a federal holiday in 1894. Carol was alive in 1894, so she remembers that quite well. But it, so why do, we, why do we celebrate Labor Day? Well, Labor Day, again, is a celebration of workers. And in the late 1800s, at the height of the Industrial Re Revolution in the United States, the average American worked 12-hour days, seven days a week. Whew. How would you like to have done that in your work life? That had been a lot, and they needed to do that in order to eke out some kind of a of a living standard, uh, because because pay was so low, and despite some of the some of these states, uh, there were children as young as five and six years old that toiled in the mills and the factories and the mines across the country, earning a fraction, only a fraction of what their their adult uh, counterparts were making. Wow. Horrible to have them that young working, but also horrible to not pay them if they're working the same amount. So people of all ages, particularly the very poor and recent immigrants, were faced with really unsafe working conditions and insufficient access to fresh air, sanitary uh, facilities, and breaks. So Congress passed an act making Labor Day the legal holiday in the District of Columbia in June 28, 1894. You didn't know it was that long ago, did you, that we, that we did that? In June, though. So in the, there was a Uniform Monday Holiday Act in 1968. That was more in my time frame. Um, that changed all the holidays, uh, several holidays, to be observed on Mondays as the federal holiday. And those those things that those holidays were changed were Washington's birthday, Memorial Day, Labor Day, Columbus Day were all fixed to Mondays. Also to let people have a three-day weekend as opposed to having it during other times of the, of the week. So Labor Day symbolizes the end of summer. Woohoo! And it's going to start after, after Monday. The temperatures here in Arizona will drop and it will all be... <laughs> Okay, anyway, it symbolized the beginning of school and that fall is actually getting ready to open. So with that in mind, I really appreciate you guys letting Linda and I go on a vacation. We were gone two weeks, covered many, many, many miles, and thank you so much for letting us off. It, uh, it, was, it was strange not thinking about, I was told not to allow, not to make any calls to find out how it's going and that you guys weren't going to call me and so it was it was kind of a good break although it was a little different not being able to be part of you guys yet it seemed like all the time we were gone i was thinking of you guys and praying for you and praying for that guy there as he as he brought the message each and every sunday and and uh so vacations are important to us aren't they even if you're retired, isn't it a good time to, I know when you retire, you're always on a vacation, right? But it's, it's good to get away. We were talking this morning about 
traveling so many miles it seems like I need a vacation from a vacation. And, and that's the way it is. However, it's good to get your mind off of what's going on in, in uh, what's going on around. So thank you again for allowing me and, and Linda to be gone for that length of time. We're going to start with, um, I want to review what we've learned because I still feel like uh, we need to keep on revelation. I, as, I, as I was gone, I kept thinking, Lord, what do you really want to do? How long do you, are you going to have me in revelation? And what is, why are we studying revelation? Why, Lord, do you have me going through? Now we're in Revelation 4, and it's been, what, four or five years since we've been on it? No, just kidding. About uh, two or three months, four months. Why, Lord, do you want me to be, be doing that? And it's, it was revealed that God wants us to think about what the future is. Remember, Revelation 1 is actually talking about the vision that John had in Chapter 2 and 3, he's talking more of the present, what the churches are like, what, what there's so many different churches, and, and what these churches were doing now in this kind of common day. But they also relate to us. It may be talking about churches, but it's talking about each one of us. And as I'm reading this now, starting in chapter 4, going on to the end of chapter 22, it's talking about future events. Things that maybe we we hope and pray we're not part of, we can see from a different realm as we're in heaven, going through these heaven's gates that you see that looks kind of like maybe just white up here. But those are heaven's gates. Hopefully we are going to be with Jesus Christ and worshiping Him and praising Him through all the tribulation that's coming after Jesus comes to receive us. Amen? So, the reason we're going through Revelation is to get you prepared to make sure that you are in line and in the will of God and following His direction. Because as we've seen the Left Behind series and seen what happens when Jesus Christ takes His church away and what's left afterwards... We don't want to be part of, but I want you to take a look at where you are in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Because I want to see you. It was hard enough being on vacation and not looking out there and seeing your lovely smiling faces. But it would be horrible to be in heaven and not see your smiling faces. So think about these as, we, as, we're, as we're continuing on in Revelation for however long. <laughs> And, uh, and, and listen to what God has to say about, about what's happening in Revelation. So we're going to go, we're going to, go to um, we're going to start again a little bit with Revelation 1. And it says, After these things I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking to me saying, Come in, come up here and I will show you. Things which must take place after this. Remember we talked about this. That John had heard this voice again. He heard the voice. He saw the vision in chapter 1. And now in chapter 4. He's seeing another vision. And he's hearing that voice. And he, isn't it good to be able to hear God's voice every single day? Hear his voice. Recognize his voice. And know that. When, when you're seeing a vision or you're talking to the Lord, get in the spirit of the Lord and listen to what he has to tell each and every one of us. Amen. Then we see in, in uh, as we've read this scripture, we see after those things, I looked up and behold a door standing open. Remember, this is the third door in chapter four. It's the third door. Remember in Revelation 3, 8 to the church of Philadelphia, it says, I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door. In that one, we talked about that that door that was open was the door that we have whenever we go out this door after church. We need to go and spread the gospel to those around us. Let other people know that Jesus Christ loves them. And someday that trumpet's going to sound and immediately 
in the twinkling of an eye, we're going to be gone if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Amen? Share that with those. You know, I, I know there's some religions that think about there's only a, a small amount of people that are going to be in heaven. And you got to work toward it and all that kind of stuff. But I praise my Lord that no matter who we are, if we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, we're going to be in heaven with Him. Amen? Amen. We're going to be up there with Him. And then we read in, uh, in, in the third chapter, also in the verse 20, about the church of Laodicea. Remember that one? was neither neither a hot or cold it was lukewarm and jesus said i would spit you out and he says behold i stand at the door and knock that's the second door that was the door we talked about that god has talked uh, jesus christ is at our door knocking on our door and it's our choice to accept jesus christ as our savior or not if we have not accepted jesus christ and opened up that door to him. It's going to be dark and dismal inside our heart. And Jesus Christ wants to come in and be our Savior. And forgive us of our sins. And cover us by the blood. Have you opened up your door to, the, to Jesus Christ? Have you opened up that door to your heart today? And then it, now we get into chapter 4 and verse 1. And it says, after these things I looked and behold, a door standing open. Now we're after the tribulation. And Jesus Christ has, has accepted all of his, his children to heaven. And now the door is being opened. And that is the door opened to heaven. That's the, that's the gates that we saw in that first slide. That is the door of heaven being opened. That's the third door. He says, come up to... Come up and the door will be open to you. Remember it says in 1 Thessalonians, For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. We are, If we are children of the Lord and we have been forgiven of our sins and we've accepted Jesus Christ into our heart and He's covered us by the precious blood of, of the Lord and we are going to be meeting Him up in heaven when the trumpet sounds, we're not going to have to go through that tribulation. Jesus Christ does not want us to go through that tribulation. I don't either. As we've seen in, in just a fictitious way that Left Behind series showed all the things that are happening and all the world tragedies that are going on all, all around us. I don't want to be there either. Okay? I don't want you to be there. I want to see your smiling faces in heaven and all this around God's throne praising Him. Amen? Then it says in chapter in uh, chapter four, verse two, it says immediately. Remember, immediately, right now, no hesitation, right then and there, there was a vision, and it says, "I was in the spirit, and behold, the throne set in heaven, and the one set on the throne." Remember, we talked about the throne. What is the throne all about? What's the throne in heaven? God's throne. It is the center of the universe. At God's throne, there's power and authority, majesty, honor, perfect justice. There's praise. There's purity. There's eternal life with God. And there's grace. That's God's throne that we talked about. Amen? Then we, then we read in, as, as a review, we read in verse 3. It says, And he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardis stone, in appearance and there was a rainbow around the throne and the appearance of an emerald wow wouldn't that be beautiful so we we learned that god is ref in the, is described in terms not in terms of human characteristics but in the beauty and the beauty of god we don't look up and see god a physical person sitting on a throne we see all the beauty and the glory and we see it in terms of the brilliance and color. We see this in the terms of jasper. Jasper being clear as crystal. And it's clear like diamonds. Wow. Such beauty. And then it says the sardis. And remember we, we talked about the sardis stone was, was one that uh, represents love and passion and desire. Jesus Christ loves you today. This is what God is all about. This is what we see on the throne is the glory of God. 
the color, the beauty, and the love that God bestows upon us. Aren't we, aren't we fortunate to, to have Jesus Christ into our life? Amen. Amen. All signifies the justice that God has for all of his people. And the, and the, the rainbow that's there, the rainbow there represents, remember we talked about it in uh, Genesis 9 when it talks about Noah and the ark and all the, all the animals going on board and all that stuff. And, and Jesus, or God flooded earth with all the water. And when the waters receded, Noah and his family were able to come out. And then God placed a rainbow up in there promising, I will never destroy earth again with water. That's God's promise. And as we read, the, as we read this scripture throughout all of the Bible, God promises us many things. And he keeps his promise. Amen? Isn't that great that he does? We can trust in the Lord with everything that we have. God loves us so much we can trust him and he won't break a promise. I know when we left on vacation, we said, oh, we may go to Palisade and get some peaches and bring back. But lo and behold, we weren't able to do that. Our promise that we thought we were going to do didn't happen. But God never breaks a promise. Nothing does he break to us. God loves us and we can trust him. Then we read in verse 4, it says, Around the throne were 24 thrones, and, and on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting, clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. Remember we talked about that, that these 24 thrones and these 24 elders represents the church from, New, from Old Testament to New Testament, from Jews and Gentiles alike. If we accept Christ in our life, these is, this is what is represented here in the 24 elders. These are the people, the representation. Remember we talked about that, that Aaron uh, was the priest and he had, uh, he had descendants of his and they were the priests. And remember all that we talked about. That's what the 24 elders were like that we spoke about just a few weeks ago. And they were clothed in white robes representing purity. They, were, they had crowns of gold on their heads. Wow, won't that be neat? We have crowns on our heads? And all the jewels that are going to be on there? I hope I, could, I, hope I, could, I hope my crown has lots of jewels. Amen? <laughs> the elders represent the entire church, all clothed in white raiment. Then we read, And from the throne proceeded lightnings, thunders, and voices, seven lamps of fire, were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of the church. Remember we talked about that represents the power of God. Thunder and lightning. Powerful, isn't it? A lot of us, when it starts thunder and lightning around here, we, we go into our, our, our homes and we hunker down a little bit. and We try to we go, oh Lord, we hope we don't. Lightning doesn't strike our house. Hope the winds don't blow over the house. Kind of reminds you of uh, Wizard of Oz, doesn't it? Where the house gets anyway. But that's the power. That's the power of thunder and lightnings. And that's what it says. And from the throne proceeded all this. God is powerful. Amen? Amen. Powerful. And beware of those that get judged according to their sinful ways. He is the judge over all of us. And then we talked about the seven lamps of fire were burning and the seven spirits. Remember the seven spirits were even identified in chapter one. And each church, the seven churches of the apocalypse, have a spirit associated with them, which represents maybe some of their talents, maybe the church's talents, maybe the way some of the churches react. As we were traveling, I, 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 was, I was thinking about this, that, you know, how many times in our life how many times in our life have you looked back and go, wow, you know, if, if, I, if I hadn't been delayed because of a, of a flat tire, something up ahead that was a wreck and I would have been there. We got delayed coming through Denver, coming back uh, uh, because of the football game, but there was also a, an accident 
And as we pass the accident, there's a little car upside down. It's a convertible. And uh, you know that that wasn't good for the drivers. And, and, the, and who is it that says that we didn't have an angel watching over us that didn't uh, that allowed us not to be there when all that happened. God protects us, doesn't he? Because we, each of us, has a time in which God has said, I will call you to heaven. I will call you away from this, from this stuff that's going on all around you today. I know you're suffering. I know we all have aches and pains. And God understands that. But he's got a time allotted to you. And he will protect you until that time. Isn't that good to know? We each have a purpose here on earth. You each have a purpose for being here this morning. Each of you needs to hear something that God is, is speaking to your hearts today. We're here for a reason. We're here for a reason. And now we get into the next section, which is the protectors of the throne of God. And we read, Before the throne of God, there was a sea of glass like crystal. A sea of glass like crystal. What in the world does that mean? Before the throne was a sea of glass like crystal. If you read in the Old Testament, you read a lot, and before the priests go into the, uh, into the temple, before they go into the temple, there is a bowl that's made out of brass and there's water in that and they clean their hands off and they clean, they're purifying themselves before they enter the throne of God. In the New Testament, we, took, we hear about Jesus Christ dying on the cross. The blood of Christ cleanses us and purifies us. Same as the bowl of brass in the Old Testament. They were cleaning themselves, cleansing themselves. Before the throne, there was a sea of glass like crystal that we dip ourselves into, that we are, we are purified. Wow. Because nobody will be able to be in heaven that has not been saved and purified and, and your sins covered by the blood. In chapter 15 of Revelation, it says... I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire and those who have the victory over the beast. So we read about this sea of glass another time later on in the, in the book of Revelation. Then we see, as this continues on it, in uh, verse 6 it says, And in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and in back. The first living creatures were like a lion. The second living creature like a calf or some translations say ox. The living or the third living creature like a face like a man. And the fourth creature was like a flying eagle. And the four creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. Hmm. Well, that's quite an image to think about. That's quite an image. Have you thought about that? If you think about that, there is a picture, and I'm sorry you probably don't see it as well, but there's a picture that may represent that image of the four living creatures with their four faces. In Ezekiel 1, I want to read a little bit of Ezekiel 1 to you. In Ezekiel 1, verse 4, it says, uh, Ezekiel has also seen a vision. It says in, in uh, verse 1 of chapter 1, the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God, Ezekiel says. Remember that was written many, 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 many uh, years before John saw this vision. And in verse 5 it says, also from it came the likeness of four living creatures and this was their appearance. They had the likeness of man. Each one had four faces and each had four wings. The legs were straight and the soles of their feet were like soles of calves. And then it continues on down in verse 10. It says, as for the likeness of their faces, each had the face of man. 
Each of the four had the face of a lion on the right side, and on the and each of the four had the face of an ox on the left side, and each of the four had the face of an eagle. So Ezekiel saw basically the same the same vision that John did. Don't you think that's kind of important, this vision? So what does that vision mean? What does that vision mean? Well, first off, it says the first creature was a lion. It said the second was a calf. The next was a, was a man. As we look at, the, look at it first, it, it talks about the eyes. It's covered in eyes. That represents or denotes vigilance or, or wariness. These eyes are looking upon everything that's going on. And that's what the eyes represent. Then we see that there's a lion. Now the lion is power and majesty. It's victory. It's the victory that Jesus Christ had over death. Remember when, when, uh, when, when uh, the scripture says that Jesus Christ had the victory when he rose from the dead and rose to go to heaven to be on the right hand of his father? That's victory over death. We will also have victory over death. Amen? Death cannot harm us because we will see Jesus Christ and worship Him forever and ever. Then it talks about the ox or the calf, whichever version you read. That represents the labor or the diligence of, of an ox. Remember the ox were used for, for pulling plows and they were there to work. And there's patience involved with an ox can't get them to move very fast but they're strong amen and it could represent also I've read that it could represent Christ's sacrifice for us because remember in the Old Testament we talk about all the sacrifices that were made and it was they, they sacrificed the perfect lamb or the perfect calf that's Jesus Christ offering himself as a sacrifice for each one of us and then we see that there is a face of man. This is, a, this is talking about Christ's incarnation or his humanity. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He did not have to come down and, and suffer the beatings and the trials and the blood and the scars for us. But he did that because he loved us so much. That's the man that God took on in his, in his son, Jesus Christ. Then we see the eagle. <clears throat> the eagle, we read a lot about the eagles mounting up and flying. And they're flying toward heaven. <clears throat> That's God's glory and the height and the sight. Eagles have great eyesight. You ever read about that? I've never seen this happen, but... But I know that eagles fly so high and yet they can see a little mouse or a little food that's way down there on the ground. And they're so high up, but they can see it. They're flying high enough, but they can look down and see what's happening around us. And they can come down and get their, their food. Eagles are flying high. This is like Christ's uh, divinity and his ascension into heaven. Christ rose when he rose from the dead. He rose up to be at the right hand of our Father. Wow. Quite a representation, isn't it, of this, of this one scripture that's told. And then we have all the, <clears throat> the wings. Now, in Ezekiel, it talks about six wings. In, in uh, Revelation chapter 4, it talks about four wings. Don't understand why one is six and one is four. Couldn't find out anything as I did research on that I, I don't have a have an idea of what that why that but it did say that the eye the wings were full of eyes as the wings were out there they were watching from on high watching us what what are you doing for Christ today are you fulfilling God's plan for your life are you watching in in Ezekiel 10 it says that uh, it relates it relates to the uh, to the cherubim or an angel like, and it talks about that this cherubim is represents the ministers of the gospel. Now, as I'm 
<clears throat> excuse me, as I'm studying on this, I'm thinking these four represent, could represent ministers of the gospel, pastors, preachers, evangelists. What am I doing? Am I staying strong and firm like a lion? Am I working for God's kingdom as an ox? And do I have the wisdom that God provides me as a man? Do I look over with the wings and fly and watch over the flock? What a responsibility it is. Am I presenting the gospel to you? You know, as I, as I said earlier, when we were on the trip, I was thinking about being gone from here. And I was thinking about what does revelation mean? And again, I thought of you guys, that God has put me here for a purpose. And maybe we're studying revelation so that each one of us can realize maybe we're, we're not totally right with the Lord and we can get things right. Because when that trumpet sounds, it'll be too late. In the twinkling of an eye, it'll be too late to say, oops, I need to get things right with the Lord. We need to do that now. Which church, as we look back on the churches, which one represents your life? Is there something that you need to change in your life? What an awesome responsibility it is to be a pastor or a preacher and have the responsibility to present the gospel so that each one of you are ready to meet the Lord. Wow. The creatures I noticed also worshiped the Lord because in, in, the, in the one verse it said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with His glory. Amen? The whole world we are sharing the gospel to everyone around us today, or we should be. This is not only myself as a pastor, but you as individual Christians have a big responsibility to share Christ with everybody around us today. Have you done that? Have you done that this last week? Do you think you'll have an opportunity this week? To share Christ? Awesome responsibility, isn't it? Remember the seraphim that we talked about in Ezekiel? If you remember in Isaiah also, there was a seraphim that took the hot coal and touched Isaiah's lips so that he would be pure and speak the purity to his to his to uh, the people in, his, in the church, Israel. In Revelation... The uh, seraphim is, is summoned up to summon the horseman that appears to bring the judgment upon the earth. In Revelation 15, it says, they gave the seven bowls of, the, of God's wrath to the seven angels to pour out over the earth. Responsibility of the seraphim. So these living creatures, these four living, this one living creature that's four, they're used to minister and to be God's administrators to God's will. Have you done that today? Are you ready to meet the Lord? I read again Revelation 4, 8. The four living creatures having six wings and full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day and night. Do you hear that? They do not rest day and night, for they say, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Are you ready to meet the Lord today? Is everything right today between you and the Lord? If not, this is the perfect day to, to get things right. Amen? Because we don't know when we walk out that door or while we're in the back fellowshipping if God will come send His Son Jesus to get us. Are you ready today? Let's pray. 
Lord in heaven, we praise your name today. For you are worthy of our praise. Lord, help us to fall down at your feet and worship you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. To God be the glory, great things you have done. Oh God, we thank you for the vision of, of heaven and, and for the vision of that throne of God and how beautiful it, it will be to see you and to praise your name for eternity. Thank you, God, for a heavenly home that you're preparing for each one of us. Lord, as we continue to search the, the scriptures, Lord, help us to be aware of, of the approaching return and make sure that we are right with you before that trumpet sounds. God, search us today. Know our hearts and souls. Help us to hear what the Spirit says to us today, Lord. God, thank you for, for being with us. Thank you for your, for your precious love to us. Lord, as we know that your return is drawing near, help us to be ready for, for, that, for that day, Lord, I pray. God, help us to have ears that hear you, that know you, that we listen to your soft, still voice each and every day. And we ask this all in your precious name, the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Stand with me as we, uh, we prepare our hearts for communion this morning. Let's sing the Lord's, the Lord's Prayer. <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated as we gentlemen come up and uh, prepare for communion please hold these elements until we all take them together and remember what uh, Paul says in, in uh, Corinthians that a man ought to examine himself before he eats or drinks of the cup let's pray Heavenly Father we, we ask as we gather together at your table that we ask in the name of the Son of Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify these elements to the souls of all who partake of them today. Lord, may we, as we drink, may we remember the body and the blood of your Son who came to earth, who lived, who died and shed his blood for us and was resurrected. Lord, help us to remember all these things and keep the commandments that you've given us. And we ask this in your holy name. Amen.
remember that communion reminds us of the cost that Jesus Christ paid for our sins. In Matthew it says, while they were eating, Jesus took the bread, and then when they had given, he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Take, eat, and be thankful. Then he says, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Take, drink, and be thankful. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your love, for the blood of Christ that loves us, that gave his life for each one of us. Thank you, God, for who you are. And we ask this in your name. Amen. Let's stand together as we close today. <coughs> Let's sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen? Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, amen and amen. Have a great Labor Day weekend. Enjoy the the uh, hot dogs and uh, brats and whatever else is going to be on the agenda for tomorrow. And remember, go out and share Christ today, would you? You are dismissed.